What's going on, mi gente? Louis the Bullet Man. Guys, today we're going to talk about an oil burner. In this case, a Colin burner. Guys, these are very popular burners out in the industry or out in the residential market. Like I said in the other previous videos, the most common ones are yellow, Colin, and you have a Beckett. But right now, we're just going to talk about the Colin burner. And you're going to see this a lot of similarities in the burner because it's pretty much the same thing, just uh, the parts might be a little bit different. But the ones that are very similar to, um, to what they are, you guys can see, it's a calling and also a Beckett. So right now we're gonna work on this calling burner. Um, this one's an easy one burner, so as you guys can know. So we're gonna identify the parts first. So this right here, this long tube right here, we call this a blast tube. This over here, we call this a burner flange. Now it's a two piece, like if you notice on the burners, it's a two piece, sometimes they come in a one piece, but most times it's a two piece. What that means is the, the, the blast tube is independent and you get a separate flange if you wanna get a separate flange if the flange goes bad. Um, right here, you have what's called a retention ring, which is right there. All right, and you got these, it's air. You see these little, uh, these little um, cuts right here, the little slice right here. It's kind of, you know, I've kind of hard to see, but air goes through there. And again, in the previous videos I showed you guys, I mentioned to you guys, air goes down the blast tube. It creates it like that turbine effect because it's not a straight flow of air. It's actually air, but it's given a turbine. You guys are gonna see in the next video, um, once we live fire her up, and you guys get able to see, you can visually take a look and see what it looks like inside the actual boiler. But I just want to show you the basic parts. This is called the transformer. Just this, this way, nice to oil. This is your primary control or a relay. So this is your relay. So if anybody talks to you about a primary control or they miss a relay, just both the same thing. <coughs> this is an oil pump, as you can see, right here. Um, the typical oil pump we use nowadays is an A pump. On the old, old units, they used to, used to um, use a pump called a J-Pump. We no longer use J-Pumps on the oil burners. But if you happen to get, um, find one, because you will find them um, out there, they're still out there, believe it or not, even though they're old, they call the J-Pump. It's a, little, a lot different. But in this case, we work on an A-Pump. On this on this A-Pump, it has what's called a delay valve and a solenoid valve, which is right over here. All that is, is just as a plunger, when it gets energized, it pulls that little plunger out and lets the oil go through. All right, um, we have a firematic valve. What's a firematic valve? It's to prevent, if God forbid there was a fire, this is actually, this little shaft right here is made out of lead. And this is an actual spring-loaded valve, meaning it's always in the closed position. And when you open her up, you're basically opening up a gate, if that makes any sense. And that's exactly what it is. But the point of this valve is, if there was ever a fire, this is made out of lead, it would melt and it will close the plunger, meaning it was cut off the supply of oil going into the into the pump, into the burner, or in this case, going into the chamber. So if there was a fire, it shuts off the fuel. Um, what else? This is the whole burner. We call this whole thing a burner, or we call the chassis or burner assembly. And also, this is where your motor is at. Inside your, inside your chassis, you have a blower wheel, and this is where you uh, adjust the air, which is right here. So you have adjustments on the side, on the, on the outside of the band, or called an air band. You, you can adjust it from here, you can adjust it from the side. On this particular case, there's no adjustments on the sides, but on other burners, they do have adjustments. You can do it on the, on the well, it's called an air band, but you can do it on the front, and you can do it actually on the side. In this case, it's just, uh, just one air band, and that's it. It's pretty straightforward, guys. Oh, and we have the draw assembly, which is inside the blast tube. Let me show you guys. Right, so now that you can identify the parts, you know what you need to replace. Your, your draw assembly is right here. Obviously, we have the disconnector, and this is your cast cell line. This is what sees the fire. Also, we call it a photo cell line. And that's pretty much it, guys. So now that you identify the parts, now we do something called a tear down. So, guys, we're about to get ready to tear down, take her apart, and now I'm going to take you to the journey of what the parts are and what they're supposed to do in a right calling burner. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is remove the draw assembly. So I'm going to take off. So to get to the draw assembly, to get access, just in case you guys can't see, like this. But you're going to be facing the gun this way because whenever you're working on a boiler, you're actually facing the burner. So there's two screws here, you guys can see it. One, two, that opens up the door of the transformer. So once you loosen that up, this opens up. Now, you gotta always make sure that there's no power to the boiler. Safety is first. 
get an adjustable or a 716 opening wrench or something like this. So you want to open up the screw or loosen screw, I should say. The screw is right here. 716, so an adjustable will do just fine. So let's loosen her up. Now it's copper, so just be careful you don't break it or bend it too much, but you're, you're allowed to bend it a little bit. Now there's an actual set screw here. The set screw. <clears throat> All right. Just make sure when you take the set screw, just notice there's a difference. One is flat and one is not. The flat side, it's always gonna go against the chassis of the burner. Now on this particular burner, they have a heater, which we're gonna disconnect. Most of them don't have a heater, but this one does. So we're gonna take her out. You also have a disconnector. It's very simple, so like a little Gomez plug. Remove it. Now, you can have to play with it a little bit. Sometimes it comes out easy, sometimes not, but let's play with it a little bit. Sure enough, put it upside down, just like that. Put it right up. And that is a draw assembly. Guys, it's pretty straightforward. So again, this is a heater. Um, some of them have a heater, some of them don't, but this one they do. But this is electrodes right here. So you have two electrodes opposed to one basic electrode. So you have two of them here. This is your retention ring, right? So this is where the air goes through. And as you get that turbine effect, like I mentioned before, uh, before to you guys. Of course, you guys want to get access to the nozzle. So if you ever have to replace a nozzle, straight, very easy, it's pretty straightforward. You gotta take a flat screwdriver, push it up, and that's it. Just like that, it's very easy. Now, to take off this nozzle, I'm not gonna take her out, but just to show you guys quickly, three quarter, five eighths box wrench. Go like this, and that's it. Just like that, you remove the nozzle. Also, I mentioned this many times in other videos, guys, the nozzles look exactly the same, but they're not the same. You always gotta read the number, the stamp, the, the number that's on the nozzle, because they're stamped, and each one has a different number. In this case, this one has a 0 .75, 60 degree. So what it is telling me is burning three quarters of a gallon an hour at a 60 degree. So 60 degrees basically is the is the is the degrees or the measurement on the size of the fire. So we have 45 degree is narrow. If it's 60 degree, it's a little wider. If it's a 80 degree, it's much wider. Think of it this way: when we say 90 degrees, that means an elbow, right? So 360 is a full circle, 180 is half a circle. So that's what that that's what that degree is, or that's what that number is, that second number. The, the number is just telling you the size of the fire. But it's the first number is very important because some boilers are not rated um, for any high consumption of fuel. Meaning like if you have a burner like we had uh, prior to a Riello, it strictly states, specifically states, that it burns 0.75 to a gallon and a half an hour. If you're out of the, that range, that burner is not designed for that. So it's telling you basically that's just range between 0.75 to one and a half, usually typically in a residential um, application. So if you're working in a commercial application, that burner will not be suitable for the application. So guys, this is what a drawer assembly looks like. Very simple. Sometimes this thing does get clogged in here. So I would always advise you guys when you take out the knobs and replacing it, uh, clean it up. You can blow through it or just blow some air, nitrogen, whatever you guys want. Do this tube right here and make sure that it's not clogged. It rarely happens, but it does happen. So we're gonna put it back together. Put it to the side. All right, so let's take it to the next step. And the next step would be, uh, all right, let's take off the primary relay. So primary relay looks something like this. There's different ones. We have a Genesis, we have a Colin, we have an 8184, I, I'm sorry, 8184 cast relay. So these numbers I'm telling you about, these names, are just different relays in the market. So it's still considered primary control. Um, it's still considered a relay. They just different manufacturers um, that got different settings, but they're pretty much the same thing. So yes, this may look a little different from a, a Honeywell. This may look, may look different from a Genesis relay, um, but they all pretty much do the same thing. All right, so right now we're gonna take her off. Let's see. So, this is a primary relay. <clears throat> like something just like this. And guys, this is labeled here. It tells you everything here. I don't want to get too crazy in, in, onto this um, onto the wiring in regards regarding to the wiring, I should say, in this video. But we'll make another video for that. But in this case, we just want to show you 
that you want to identify what an oil burner really looks like. This is what it looks like. And just quickly, it's pretty straightforward. It gives you all the little wire diagrams here, meaning, so L1 means hot, L2 means neutral. And it also tells you where to connect the motor, the igniter, in this case, or the transformer, the delay, the delay valve, etc. So guys, I would always advise you guys, read the instructions first. Um, if you have a question, you can always leave a comment below or reach out to me. But I will always advise anybody, read the instructions before you do the job. If you're not familiar, familiarize yourself with the, with the relay, but they color coded, so it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, now this right here is called the cast li or photo li. It's pretty straightforward. Photo li works the same way as one of those outdoor sensors you see in your garage that when it turns dark out, it turns on the light. When it gets, uh, sun comes out, it shuts off. So something like this. Here's the harness. Right here, this yellow bar you see here is your harness. <coughs> um, in regards to uh, the transformer, this is what the transformer looks like. If you have to replace the transformer, very simple, you just connect it from here. There's two screws, one here, one here, left and right. And I wanna show you guys. Again, guys, it's very simple, it's not hard, but I know I've been doing this for years, so I always advise you guys, take a picture, take a video. When they say a picture in a video is worth a thousand words, it's literally worth a thousand or maybe more. <laughs> so guys, this is how you change the transformer. So you have pigtails here, or you get disconnected from here. Some guys just cut them and pigtail them. All the pigtail is, what we call, is a splice. So when you have two wires put together, put a wire cap, we call that a pigtail. So if you have to change the transformer, that's all you gotta do is replace these two, take off these two screws, cut the wire, remove the cast li. Cast li looks something like this, and you can take it apart. Sometimes it's a little hard to take off, but what I can do is do this, do this, and you can reuse the cast li again. So this, there's like a little slot here, and that's where the cast li goes into. And it goes in just like that. All right, guys, <coughs> what's next? Oh, so we're gonna remove the oil. Oh. That's gonna be nervous here, huh? All right guys, so now we just showed you how to remove the transformer. And now I'm gonna cover it back up. Now, we're gonna remove this oil pump. Oil pump is pretty straightforward. This has a harness, very simple, pull it out. We use this on the normal burners, they call it clean cut oil, oil pump. So, that will plug. Can't make this up, you can't screw this up because there's only three ways you can see. I don't know if you guys can see that there. So it's pretty much idiot proof. It only goes, it goes in just one way. So there's two screws that's holding this in place into the chassis. One, two, that's it. You can use a flat screwdriver, you guys can see right here, or you can use an adjustable or an open end wrench or a nut driver, whichever you uh, choose to. In this case, we're gonna use a flat screwdriver. <coughs> so guys, you gotta screw this here, just like this. If you ever have to change or replace, for whatever reason, the oil pump, there you go. Two bolts, comes right out, boom. That's easy. So guys, the oil pump realistically is just this. This is just a nozzle port, so when you get a new oil pump, you are gonna have to either reuse this or replace it. So this is the nozzle port, this is the nozzle line. So, but this is not actually a part of the oil pump. And this is called a firematic valve. Again, this is not part of it. So what you're looking at here, that's actually the oil pump itself. It's called a clean cut oil pump. So it will have this little plug here on top, which you connect your harness to. And it's basically a delay valve. All right. So what do you guys see inside here? I don't know if you guys notice in here. Take it out. This. You guys might be saying to yourself, what is this? 
So this is called the oil burner coupling. This is a coupling because this motor mechanically drives this um, oil pump. What do I mean by that? So on one end of the motor, which I'm gonna show you momentarily, is connected to this coupling, which is on this side. And this side of the coupling, you guys can see the hole is um, different. It's different as far as size. So the bigger the hole, that goes on the motor side. The smaller the hole, goes to the shaft of this oil pump. So it looks something like that. So this is what drives the oil pump. It's a mechanical driven oil pump. So there's no electric. It's just basically a little coupling like this. Now these couplings do go bad. One, they either break. Two, they either strip. They strip because it's so much torque, it strips out the, the insert inside this actual piece right here. And you think it's spinning, but it's not spinning. So if you go to a, a, a job and you're troubleshooting, first thing I will tell you guys, if it does turn on, just make sure this is spinning and make sure it's actually spinning the shaft because you'll be scratching your head. You'll be thinking, oh, what's going on? And all it is is just a, a coupling. So guys, this is what it's called, or this is what it is, a coupling, oil burner coupling. So if you ever see something like this, you can identify it. In this burner coupling, you hook it up to the shaft just like this. Sometimes you have to play with it a little bit because <clears throat> it's a little, it's not, it's not hard, but it's um, on the coupling, there's only one way that it fits. And sometimes you gotta find that sweet spot. So what I like to do sometimes is just loosen right here, loosen right here. I'll play with the actual motor or the blow wheel and you'll actually feel the sweet spot go in. So right now, you see there's a gap here. There we go, I found it. So once you find that sweet spot, now you know it's all the way in. And obviously because it's only going one way, so it's all the way in. So we'll connect it back over here. guys <clears throat> once you're done with this video um, it's gonna be safe to say you guys will be able to replace any part on this burner the question is can you identify which is the part that's bad that's a whole different story it's a whole different video but today we're just gonna talk about identifying the parts and how to take it apart and put it back together so we do want to put this back together so I am going to put this draw something back together this just like that all right so I got her in there I replace now put this remember what I told you the flat side goes to the chassis Your nozzle line or your copper nozzle line goes just like this. You're gonna put it right back together. And the size for this copper nozzle line is 7 16. So get yourself a 7 16 open box wrench. Okay, put it back together here. Back together here. So we're almost done. So now we want to talk about the motor. This is the motor. So same thing here. There's only two bolts holding her in. So you guys can see one here and one on the other side. So we want to take her apart. Take her like this. So again, get yourself a nice adjustable. Um, I would say a long screwdriver, flat install or something like this. 
Because something, sometimes, 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 sometimes you'll find yourself in a predicament that is very tight, it's very tight, it's hard to get in there. Remember, in a boiler room, naturally this is lower, this is near the floor, it's uncomfortable. So you want to make sure you have enough room or you have a tool that has a long shaft be able to get to the actual board. So, but we do want to show you, once you take off these two screws, or both as I say, <clears throat> take it off, that's right, you can see it looks just like that, I'm going to take it apart, and this is what it looks like. Remember what I told you guys, this connects to the oil pump, well, this is the side that's connected to the actual motor, and this is the side that connects to the oil pump, right here. So this is the blow wheel. We're not gonna take it off, but I wanna show you guys. It's pretty straightforward. You wanna get yourself an Allen key that looks something just like this, one of these T. I mean, we have other Allen keys that look something like this as well, but this is a lot easier to use. I mean, you put yourself, there's a little slot here that you can put the Allen key in. You put it just like this. You guys can see there's a set screw right here that goes into the hub of the actual motor. Loosen that up. Once you loosen that up, this wheel comes out. So if you ever need to remove the wheel, you can take it out just the way you'll take it out. You actually remove the set screw or loosen it up, take off the wheel, replace it, put the wheel back on. Also make sure when you do replace it or if you have to take it off when you put it back together, it's not touching the actual chassis of the motor. If it's too close, it's gonna make a noise, it's make a loud, annoying, not a noise that you do not wanna hear and it's just actually touching. So you don't wanna do the job twice, that's what I'm trying to say. So you definitely wanna leave with a little bit of a gap, maybe like an eighth of an inch. I would say an eighth of an inch is good enough, but the whole point is you don't want it to, to uh, touch the chassis. What I like to do is just spinner, and you can actually see if it's touching the chassis or you can hear like a little, like a little, um, a little noise that's touching. So if you do see that, that just means that you gotta loosen her up again, and we're out, back her out a little bit, and then tighten her up, and do the same process again. The minute you find yourself that it's not touching the chassis, it's not making any noise, then it's safe to say you're able to put it back together. All right, guys, let me get take a look inside here. That's how it looks like inside. All right. And yes, this is pretty much a very straightforward breakdown of what a calling oil burner looks like. So guys, go put it together. Bolt right back in here. And you're gonna see in the next burner, which we're gonna work is on a Beckett, it's pretty much the same thing. It's pretty straightforward. But I wanna show you guys how simple it is also in comparison to back in the calling. They're pretty much, even though the two different manufacturers, I would like to say that if you can work on a Collin, you can work on a Beckett. If you work on a Beckett, you can definitely work on a Collin. They're very common burners. And when you see it for yourself, you're gonna say, wow, they're pretty close or they're pretty similar. So guys, that was a breakdown of this burner. I hope this video suits uh, suits you well and help, has helped you out. I give you an idea and understanding what an oil burner looks like, specifically on a calling. If you have any questions, please reach out to Louis the Boilerman. It was called me at 516 But most importantly, you guys can always hit that bell button, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel because I would love to hear from you guys. With that being said, woo-wee,